Right, it, right. The, the kids that are on the front line are saying, wow, you know. Right, yeah. it, so Isn't it a difficult position By the way, we're still recording here, so. I understand. Okay, yeah. right, isn't yeah. it a difficult position, actually, for both of the men running for governor? Because you've got a Democrat saying, no, the governor's a tax hiker. And you've got the Republican governor saying, no, I didn't cut education. I mean, that cuts against, you know, deeply held beliefs. It is, and that's why, I mean, I think that there needs to be some pivots here um, that, that, by and large, if you, if you begin to make the case that the deficit was a false deficit or it was not something that he inherited, you begin to, you begin to unravel some of that dynamic. Well, yeah, but you're going to get in the same, you know, he said, she said that you have with the education well, funding. So you know, yeah, 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 I did. No, you didn't. Yeah, and I that's did. why I, I, I'm reluctant to criticize Mark Schauer for this because in the end, you've got to lay that groundwork well Me. before yeah. he became a candidate. And it's so, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm struck by what term limits has done to the infrastructure of the Democratic Party, and I'm sure there's a similar impact for Republicans. But you know, it used to be this, that the that the the ground game, the infrastructure, was carried by state representatives in the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't remember. They well, don't they, yeah, they don't remember, <laughs> and no, you know, know, and it takes you 10 years to yeah. build up that kind of. Yeah, uh, you know, infrastructure, and you know they're not there anymore. That's a good point. And then the flip side is, I can recall, the agendas for the Democratic Party in the state were set by Bill Ryan, Bobby Crim, Gary Owen, Curtis Hertel, uh, Bill Faust, myself. You know, and and now that leadership is they're they're trying to figure out, you know, what's what. And they don't have time to go out there and build an agenda. I yeah. mean, that was a long-term piece. A and so when Jim Blanchard ran, there was an agenda for Jim to pick up and run with. When Jennifer Granholm became the nominee, there was an agenda to pick up and run with. You know, the party, now see, I think the one thing that Lon Johnson has done well, it's to, he stepped in and he's building up this ground game infrastructure. Yeah. And, and in, in all fairness to Lon, uh, you know, he's had to focus on that. But when he gets done with that, they need to turn around and build up that same infrastructure for setting an agenda. Uh, because, you know, the task that Mark Schauer has and any challenger has is that, first of all, you got to convince the public that the incumbent needs to be fired. And after you've done that, you got to convince the public that they got to hire you. Well, that's the and point. He and I don't that. think he's done that. Well, he, I don't think he's done it. Yet either, but but, they, but he's made such a case on the firing right. that There's he's not much in the time game. Left, though. No, but he's in the game, and so quite frank, and there isn't much time with, and so I don't think they're going to focus on that, and in, and that's what I'm saying is that it's not really Mark's fault. The party needs to be over time building that agenda, so that everybody is familiar with it and can echo it, and the candidate just inherits it. Who do you think is going to be the next Democratic Party chair? Lon Johnson again, somebody else? I think Lon Johnson will be. I think uh, he's had one term. I mean, it's, I think people will be inclined to keep him there. Uh, and if he has a success, as if he has a success this time, I mean, he's in great shape. Well, let's stay on that point because yeah. there's some research that suggests people don't want to vote for somebody just because you tell them he's a bad guy. What are you going to do for me? And what you just said here is that Shower has not closed that deal. He's done a good argument on fire the guy who's right, there, yeah, but hasn't done a good job on, so, okay, and after you fire him, elect me because I'm better. You don't think he's delivered that message yet? I don't think it's been delivered yet. Um, um, but, uh, and this is the flip side, is that with the missteps that have happened um, um, and, and the negatives that have been used, the pension tax, education cuts, mm -hmm. that the strength of those negatives have put, has made the election very close. And it's made it close enough that the ground game, if it's successful, may carry the day. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some rumblings that there's a Detroit problem with the Democratic Party. That um, that that there's a that there's some dissatisfaction with Lon Johnson um, uh, in Detroit, and Mark Shower's got a Detroit problem. Um, and and how do you how do you turn that around? Well, I, I think uh, that in the end you have to turn it's it, it's um, you have to turn around with your incumbent um, 
I, I think the congressional delegation really needs to step up and begin to insert itself in a way that begins to replace some of this lost infrastructure that came out of the legislature. The, the, the congressional delegation is the only long-term, broad-sitting institution out there, and they need to step up with that. And so, you know, I, I'm quite frankly hopeful because uh, Gary Peters, for one, um, doesn't seem to have that Detroit problem. He's represented Oakland County, Wayne County, the city of Detroit. He seems to come out of there with a great deal of support by the African-American community in Detroit. And my hope then as a United States Senator, he will begin to build that infrastructure that will benefit the party and help put that problem to rest. Because in the end, it's about inclusion. It's about making sure that, the, that, that whatever the party does is a partnership, both geographically and uh, in other ways. I mean, in the end, I mean, what John Engler, I thought, was so good at is he would figure out what coalition he needed to win. And then he went about building that coalition through governance. And, and I think that Gary Peters, for one, is the kind of person that can do that. I think with Debbie Stabenow, he'll have a great partner in that regard. But part of, I mean, you know, Carl Levin's been a great United States Senator, but Carl always kind of focused on those big issues. I think Gary will be good on those, but I think he won't forget that he has to build infrastructure. But that doesn't help shower between now and election. Well, no, it doesn't. And, <clears throat> and, and, but you ask me how you put that problem yeah, to rest. Right. You so don't put it to rest in 19 all days. Right, so you think all the congressional guys, the Conyers of the world, ought to get together with shower and just go around? Well, I, I'm saying that it's a long, you don't deal with that problem in the short term. Yeah. You know, it's a long-term problem. So if you want to ask me how you deal with it, mm -hmm. you deal with it in a long-term way. And, and the other piece is how do you deal with it in the short term? You bring a Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, into town yep. and have them talk about the importance of this election to the African American community, yep. and they're doing that. Well, does it help that they've got a mayor now who's a, a political animal? It does help. Mike Duggan. But is know. he doing yeah. enough? Well, and, and, and he's preoccupied now, but I mean, like in the long in the long term, even after yeah. this election, I mean, is, is that a guy who can who can oh, really I, help? I do. Help I think more? Mike Duggan's the kind of guy that can help. I don't think he's out there trying to undercut it. And that's what no. I mean. That's what Coleman used to do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And my, so, Mike. I mean, I think you know he is in a, an interesting position. You know, with the city still in bankruptcy, and you know, with things very tenuous to go out there and really push the Democratic slate when you've got a Republican governor. It's difficult. It's yeah. difficult, and and the problems that he face <laughs> faces is time consuming in terms of one's attention. And it does take time to build an infrastructure that you can then use to deliver. There is no machine in Detroit anymore. No, and Mike has to rebuild that. Or, and, yeah. um, or any he, he comes from the last machine there was. That's right. That's right. right. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I think he, he was, was running for was governor? governor. Well, I, mean, I don't know. He hasn't talked to me about it, but he's certainly in a position. He's one of the, one of the Democratic elected uh, individuals who's positioned for statewide office because of being mayor of Detroit. I mean, if you're mayor of Detroit, if you're county executive of Wayne, if you're county executive of uh, Macomb or county executive of Oakland, you're in an excellent position mm -hmm. to be a statewide candidate. Has, any, has the governor done anything that impressed you? Um, you know, I, I, I don't think it... Um, I don't think the governor has approached his job in a partisan way. Um, you know, uh, I have some admiration for John Engler, not because I agreed with John, but he was very good at his job. And John uh, could be very partisan, both in terms of who he hired and how they operated. And the governor's not done that. And to his detriment. Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, the legislature's acted differently than that. Um, but I, I think he, you know, he tried to not create uh, partisan problems that would stand in the way of what he wanted to accomplish. But in the end, I think in the long run, the, the agenda that, that has been played out here has been more Speaker Bolger's agenda than the governor's. Are you glad that you didn't run for governor in 2010? Um, well, um, under the circumstances, I think I made the right decision. 
<laughs> you know, I don't know that I'm glad about it. I mean, I've had some frustrations with um, some of the things. I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't think, um, I think that the tax policy the state has, has chose to follow in the last four years has not been fair and has not been one that, that everyone can prosper with. I don't think it's been successful in creating jobs. So I, I feel some of the frustrations that a lot of Democrats feel. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, now my, my choice to deal with that is to be supportive of candidates who I think will make the right choice. Not to redo history, but take us to the moment where you decided that you would not run. What closed that deal for you in your mind? It became apparent to me that, that the individuals and groups that Democrats traditionally rely on to raise money simply were financially exhausted and that they weren't prepared to step up and, uh, and, and play as they had in the past. And, and that, I don't think, was a reflection of, uh, of them or um, my circumstance. I mean, I think, you know, if you recall, uh, GM and Chrysler were on the verge of bankruptcy. The economy was, was in difficult circumstances. And so it didn't matter what business you were in in Michigan. You were financially hurting. And, um, and if you were an organization, your membership was shrinking dramatically. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, we just weren't prepared. We, you know, the economy was, was at its worst. And um, uh, I think Democrats were feeling very badly at that time. Did, was it as simple as you went to the UAW and said, I need money, and they said, Mr. Sherry, we're not going to do it? No, in fact, the UAW was somewhat helpful to me. Who uh, turned you down then? Well, I mean, there were other AFL-CI unions who just were not in a position to, uh, to be helpful. And here's a guy who had carried their water for 20 years, and they're not going to help you. How did you feel? Well, I don't know that was a question that they said, you know, uh, under the circumstances, we don't want to help you, we want to help somebody else. They didn't say that. Their capacity to help wasn't there. I mean, they lost membership. When you lose membership, um, you know, people aren't able to voluntarily, you know, even, even the members that they still had were concerned about their job. And but perhaps, I mean, they just financially weren't in a position to give as much money as they have in the past. And those organizations can't, can't dole out uh, dues money, you know, they have to dole out uh, money that is voluntarily given by their members. So, but, but now that right to work has passed and everybody's out for blood, they've found plenty of money for Mark Shower, haven't they? Well, you know, after a while, you, you do, though. I mean, I think that the negative of what the Republicans, done, Republicans have done over time is that, you know, people try to survive. And when you get, when you get in that position, you figure out what you need to do to make stuff happen. At the, f at the initial, you know, when, when it's initially happening to you, you're, you're, you're not quite sure what to do, and, and you struggle. But you know in the end that you've got, to, you've got to do something to change, and I think they have fought their way through it and have gotten in a position to help, and not only that, but their allies outside the state are much better financial position what they were. If you remember that recession that we had um, in 2010 was a, uh, or you know, leading up to 2010, was a national recession. And it wasn't just, um, it just wasn't uh, the U Michigan UAW and the Michigan AFL-CIA unions that were facing problems, that was across the country. And, um, and so that, the, the, they have covered much faster than what's, what's occurred in Michigan. So they're in a much better position to help. A lot of, there's a lot of outside money coming to Michigan right now, mm -hmm. both on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. How's the right to work thing gonna play out in five, 10 years down the road uh, as far as funding for uh, political campaigns? Well, I, 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 you know, I, just, I think the days of, of how organized labor in the UAW particularly played, say, go back to the early 1970s. Um, those days are long gone and we won't see them again. I mean, you know, uh, just in my area, in Genesee, you know, at that time there were 80,000 UAW members. And I'm not talking about their families, but 80,000 UAW members in that, that Genesee County area. Today there are about 8,000. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, there's just no way. Uh, Is 
I, is demoralization <laughs> a bigger problem for Democrats than Republicans? Um, uh, I think less so today. I mean, the one good thing about term limits and lack of institutional memory is you don't remember all the bad things that happened to you, so you're not as demoralized. <laughs> you're there, you know? And so I think uh, as a result, these sitting uh, House Democrats, sitting House Senate uh, Dem Democrats, are, have done a great job recruiting candidates. So I mean, I think they've got a great mix of candidates. So they don't, they're not acting like they're demoralized. You know, maybe some from my generation may be a little demoralized, but not the ones sitting there. But they were in 2010. That was right. A huge but, they, but that's you know, <laughs> if you remember, I mean, it was a 2010. You had people like myself and longer-term legislators who were still very much plain, um, and we had been the ones that have been whacked over the head by the recession and by the politics of the times. People that are in office now. Uh, weren't there in 2010. They're excited about being there. They're trying to figure out what they can do to get back in the game. And so I think they're doing some things that are going to have a uh, make a so difference. ignorance is bliss. In this case, <laughs> it is. Governor, thank you. It's good, to see you. good to see you. Good show, guys. Okay. Appreciate it. Yep. Checks are in the mail. All righty.